I'm Bjorn, and welcome back to Bjorn Does Movies. Uh, as you can see, I am somewhere spooky. We've got some bats and some, like, what is that, like a creepy haunted house over there? Very spooky. And that's because today is Halloween. I'm recording this, editing it, and putting it out all on Halloween. Because we're going to be talking about something really, really scary. That's right, the MCU's version of the Thunderbolts. Uh, I've talked about this before. I wrote my own version of what I think that movie should be. And since then, I've kind of followed the production of this movie on and off with some mild interest, and uh, now I want to talk about it. So, uh, right off the bat, uh, what are the Thunderbolts? According to the MCU, it's the MCU version of the Suicide Squad, but also not really, because really what this movie appears to be is Black Widow 2. It's being written by the same man who wrote Black Widow, because, you know, he needed another job. We all saw that movie. It was amazing. We all loved it. Hell yeah, the villain who smells really, really bad and that makes no one want to punch him, that's a good villain. We need more stuff like that. Their version of Taskmaster, more of that please, thank you. So yeah, we've got that person in charge, writing. And a director who, honestly, I don't know much about his work, but uh, I don't think he directed another MC movie before this. I don't think he was the guy who directed Black Widow. If I'm wrong about that, I didn't do much research, so crucify me in the comments, tell me I'm an idiot, I don't care. Uh, so, not great. Uh, the bringing back the Black Widow writer seems like a horrible idea. Like, I don't even need to explain why this is a terrible idea. So, maybe, by some stroke of God, uh, Black Widow was an accident, and this writer is actually extremely talented and, and uh, you know, very, very good at what he does. Maybe that's what happened. So, what's the team look like? What are they doing with the Thunderbolts? This is where I like to get into the terror section, because, oh my god, when they put out this picture with this roster, I lost my mind. Let's go through this roster one by one, just to prove a point. Alright, we've got U.S. agent John Walker, someone who I think should absolutely be on the team. He's been on the team in the comic books, he's a great character. Uh, his powers, he's really strong, he's kind of a Captain America ripoff. But that's sort of his whole point. He's a different take on Captain America. What would happen if someone of a different moral persuasion, a true modern soldier, as opposed to a, a you know, glorified World War II soldier uh, you know, in that, that era of idealism, what if we had Captain America be uh, a more morally gray modern soldier? That's a great idea, and that character explores that. So, okay, we've got a very similar to Captain America character with a superhuman serum. All right, uh, we got... Bucky Barnes, okay, uh, what's his what's his deal? Uh, he is a Captain America's best friend, and he has a super strength and a metal arm that he can use to block incoming damage. He is a super soldier trained by the Russians as an assassin and works as a foil to Captain America. Uh, basically, what would happen if Captain America was a Soviet? Okay, um, those two are a little similar, but you know, that's okay. Uh, who, who's next? Oh, we, we've got... Gar Red Guardian. Um, Red Guardian is the Russian version of Captain America who took super serum made by Russia and approaches being Captain America from a Russian point of view. You guys seeing the problem here? You guys noticing the issue? Well, I'm not even done yet, so don't start noticing issues quite yet. Don't get too far ahead of yourselves. We've got Yelena, who is a soldier a version of Black Widow who was never rescued from the Red Room and became more morally gray than Black Widow. Oh no. This character is a person who punches someone, just like all these other characters. Now, she doesn't have super strength, as far as I'm aware, yet. Uh, but she, she seems to be just very similar to Black Widow, a character we already have in the MCU. So, um, let's go ahead and let's take a look at who's next. Who else is on this team? Well, we've got a Taskmaster. A person who imitates Captain America with a shield on their arm. Okay, I'm kidding. Taskmaster does a lot more than that. I just couldn't help making the joke. Uh, Taskmaster copies any superpower that involves fighting. He has perfect mirroring copying, or she, I guess. Um, and yeah, honestly, I love Taskmaster, but this version of Taskmaster sucks ass. Everyone universally agrees this version of Taskmaster absolutely sucks ass and this is the point of the character so i'm not happy to see this character here because i don't like this character this is a very lame version of taskmaster um not that badass maybe they could do some character work with them in the thunderbolts but i doubt it um so i'm not too happy about their inclusion but again this is a character that punches things so so far you have a team full of people that punch things there's no 
unique abilities, nothing flashy, nothing interesting. They're all spies or soldiers who punch things. How boring of a team. You know, when I think about my favorite superhero teams, you know, they're all people that punch things. You know, you've got the Avengers with Iron Man and admittedly a couple of characters who punch things, but then you've got Hawkeye who shoots things with arrows. You've got Thor who fires lightning from a magic hammer that allows him to fly. And Iron Man, you know, he blasts blasts and makes tech suits. And uh, and then, you know, imagine if that team was just full of Captain America spinoffs and then Black Widow. And then one character who has a power, uh, but not like one of the interesting ones. It's like uh, all of these all of these really interesting characters and then Hawkeye. So that's what the Thunderbolts is looking like in the MCU. They have Ghost, who was in a terrible movie, Ant-Man and the Wasp, but the character was really cool, easily the highlight of that movie, and I'm actually excited that they're going to be doing something with her, because her power is unique. It allows her to fight in an interesting way, and could be conducive to cool action set pieces. That's incredible. Now, okay, we've got a bunch of guys who have the Captain America super serum, and then one person who phases, uh, and then one person who's just a normal person. And then one person who copies things and doesn't seem to have super serum. Maybe they do. I'm not quite sure with that. So what are they fighting? Clearly they need some kind of street level or upper street level villain. You know, Sentry. They're fighting Sentry apparently. This is according to rumors. This isn't confirmed. Um, Sentry, the Superman ripoff. Excuse me? What the fuck? So you've got the Thunderbolts in the MCU who are all Captain America ripoffs and or normal people and one person who phases. And they're going to fight fucking Superman? Even nerfed Superman would be too strong for them. Like Homelander's nerfed Superman. And even he would just wipe the floor with this team. What, what's the plot of this going to be? How are they going to last more than five seconds? Who is behind this movie? What, where is the idea? So for those of you who are watching this and haven't watched the stuff on my channel before and have no idea what the Thunderbolts are supposed to be like, and the MCU is your only exposure to what these characters are, let me briefly explain what the comic book run is like. It's often called Marvel's Suicide Squad, and in later runs, yeah, that's what they are, as I say in my last videos. Uh, but what the Thunderbolts started as were the Masters of Evil, the uh, opposite of the Avengers, like, you know, they are what they are. Uh, pretending to be superheroes to infiltrate the Avengers. And what a cool concept that is. So these, these super villains have to fake being heroic and help people, all while working their way into the uh, ranks of the heroes, planning to betray them. But several of their members get cold feet when they begin to realize that being a hero feels good and they actually like it. So a moral question is answered. Will these villains turn to good and find redemption within their hearts? Will the world offer redemption to these villains who have done vile things, even if they truly have a change of heart? And uh, what happens to someone who moves past their evil deeds to try to find a better life for themselves? Can they ever forgive themselves? And this comic book uh, seeks to explore those answers with a very interesting and varied cast of characters with uh, different moral qualms about killing, not killing, different backstories. The original run featured a variety of powers, too. You had Songbird, who can scream super loud like Black Canary and create hard light constructs. Really cool power, an amazing character. I think one of the best comic characters ever. Her run in the Thunderbolts, where uh, she's really the one with the moral scruples, is very fascinating, which is why I focus on her heavily in my adaptation. Songbird is nowhere to be seen in this movie. I'd seen some rumors that Sadie Sink was going to be cast as her, but I haven't seen anywhere that's been confirmed, and oh my god, that would be horrible casting. Sadie Sink is literally a child. She's a very young person. Why in the fuck would we cast her as... Uh, Songbird, who's supposed to be in her 20s or 30s. Uh, I don't know what the thought process is there. I think it's the miscast of all time. Maybe if Sadie was older, that could work. But uh, for what it is now, I don't know. And considering this movie, I think it's already been filmed, and there's not been any confirmation of this, and no, like, you know, substantial leaks, I think this is probably fake news. Um, so beyond that, we have one member who ever appeared in the Thunderbolts, and it wasn't in the original team, it was in some of the later runs, and that's U.S. Agent. I think Bucky Barnes has started appearing as a member of the Thunderbolts. I think this is intended as like a brand synergy thing, because it seems to have only started in my... I think as far as I can remember, it's only really started with the rise of the MCU and their rumors about their Thunderbolts. So I don't think this is really something you can point to and go, well, Bucky Barnes was on the Thunderbolts, and I don't even hate... Bucky Barnes being on the Thunderbolts. It's just all of these Captain America ripoffs being on the Thunderbolts. In my opinion, they should stick to U.S. Agent and everyone else should go. And, and so far, these characters are anti-heroes, not villains. Some of them are outright heroes. 
So, uh, again, the, they missed the point of the comic run, clearly. The characters I wound up using were Ghost Bullseye from the Daredevil television show, Zemo, who we'll get to in a second, U.S. Agent, and then I added original characters, uh, Dallas Rewardain, who is a very important part of the original Thunderbolts run, and uh, Speed Demon, who is a, uh, a Spider-Man villain who I love. I redesigned uh, in my script. If you're curious about how I did the Thunderbolts and you want to see what I'm talking about, you can watch that up in the annotation. I think it's actually going to be over there. Uh, and you can, you can watch through that. It's long. Sorry. It's a movie I wrote, so it has to be. And if you agree with my take, you can come back here and listen to more of my points. I think Zemo is the biggest missed opportunity here. The MCU has a Zemo. He is a popular character. Now, he's not like comic book Zemo, not nearly that evil, but he has his own interesting take. And I actually like this version of Zemo quite a bit. So I was very confused when they announced the cast for Thunderbolts and Zemo was not there. For those who don't know, Zemo is the leader of the original run of the Thunderbolts. So it makes complete sense to utilize their version of Zemo. He's popular. I'd say one of the more liked characters in the MCU, especially one of the more liked villains. He is a true villain, which would make him the only true villain on this entire fucking team. And he is interesting, first off. He's just a good character. So why not include him? Uh, the actor is popular, but not too popular, which makes him probably attainable as far as, like, you can probably get him to be in this movie. So I don't know why they didn't go with him. And the only reason I can think is that this movie is not the Thunderbolts. That's the secret. It's Black Widow 2. Every character here, just about, was featured in either Black Widow or Winter Soldier, which features Black Widow. So I don't know why they're even calling this Thunderbolts. They should just be calling it Black Widow 2. This team is not the Thunderbolts. Uh, and I, I know I sound like an angry, uh, pathetic nerd on the internet, and I am. For all I know, this movie will be good. I have no evidence to say it won't be good, except for that lizard brain in the back of my head just screaming, they don't understand the source material, they don't understand the source material, this is going to be terrible. And Black Widow was bad, the writer who wrote that is still somehow employed at Marvel, proving that once again at Marvel you can fall up. They're handing them a franchise, which I think should be one of Marvel's flagships. The Thunderbolts aren't that popular, right? They're known, but they're not well known. They fall into that Guardians of the Galaxy category for me. I think these could be a big hit. I think if you did the right angle on the Thunderbolts and kept the core of that original run intact as best as you can, you could make something fucking fantastic here. Uh, something that, you know, really resonates with audiences and can continue to be popular for years. You could start a new franchise to replace Guardians of the Galaxy, have a new team of people with a variety of powers. I mean, you want to look to my points about a variety of powers being interesting. Look at the Guardians of the Galaxy. They're all completely varied. You've got Gamora, who's an assassin with a sword. Uh, Peter Quill, uh, a kind of schlubby loser who uses guns, uh, blasters. Rocket, a tinkerer who builds all kinds of strange gadgets. And Groot, someone who can create branches out of their uh, arms, you know, like a magic talking tree guy. And you've got uh, Drax, who's a strong muscle uh, doofus with... Uh, Knives. Later you get Mantis who can control emotions and uh, even more later you get uh, Adam Warlock who's I, I guess I'd say like a Superman Captain Marvel ripoff but that's not quite right. But anyway my point is that's a variety of abilities right that's unique. Each one of those characters is different has a different personality and brings something else to the table. I can't say the same for the Thunderbolts. All these people are so fucking similar that you're gonna wind up just having a bland character cast where no one or maybe one member stands out. And I don't think that's going to be conductive to a good run. And you're also losing the core of the original run. Villains pretending to be heroes. Here you just have like a team of anti-heroes. I've seen no evidence that they're even going to pretend to be uh, bad guys or good guys or what's going on there. It looks to me like a, a lamer Suicide Squad ripoff. And I know it's going to be lamer because it's PG-13. They're not going to kill these characters. They're too marketable. And so you're going to be left with something very bland and boring. And the villain, Sentry, I don't think they're going to do anything interesting with Sentry. I, I doubt. Uh, if they do, I'll be pleasantly surprised. Um, if it really is Sentry, I don't know what the fuck they're thinking with this lineup. Maybe if you had characters like Songbird or Mach X or some of these other uh, Thunderbolt characters, Atlas, who have actual powers that are strong, maybe you could make an argument that they could beat Sentry. But uh, certainly not in this current lineup. They don't even have a character who can fly. Sentry flies. What's to stop it from just floating up in the air, shooting laser blasts down at these fuckers who can't even fucking fly to stop him? I, this is just a complete misfire on every level. 
And again, this is all based on rumor and speculation, and this is mostly just me bitching. But this frightens me, because I like the Thunderbolts, and what happens in these MCU movies, whether you like it or not, sets the stage for what people think of these characters in the comics. It changes what they're like in the comics. That's a fact. So if the Thunderbolts movie is even mildly popular, or even if it isn't, the entire comic book run will warp itself into becoming just like this. I guarantee it. In fact, I'll put, a, I'll put a, a thing, like in the comments, if I am wrong, I will write in the comments, hey, I was wrong, it didn't impact anything, I was super stupid, but we all know it's going to. That's how this works, it's called brand synergy. The MCU wants the comics to reflect the uh, movies so that you can go right from the movies to the comics and not feel confused. It happened with Guardians of the Galaxy, it'll happen with any character that is featured in one of these movies. So... Uh, that's that's it. That's my rant. Uh, I think this movie will be terrible. I'm going to be very interested to watch it. Uh, I'll review it because I wrote my own version of what I think the movie should be using the MCU characters and the continuity. So it would be interesting to me to see if I am either better or worse than what is featured in this movie. So uh, yeah, we'll see what plays out with that. Um, it'll be interesting to see how this movie does, uh, if it's well received, if it's good, if it's surprisingly great. I'll release a second video saying I was an idiot and that I was wrong. I just don't think that's going to be the case. So, all right, uh, I've been Bjorn. Uh, if you're looking for something else to watch, obviously my own version of Thunderbolts here. Uh, here I do Suicide Squad. Uh, if you're new to the channel, that's my main thing is I do DC stuff, uh, writing movies. Um, uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. This is kind of an offshoot. I don't normally do videos like this, but maybe I'll do more if this does well. All right, uh, have a happy Halloween. Y'all have fun trick-or-treating if y'all still do that and uh, or go into a costume party, whatever. Um, I'm going to go prepare to do stuff like that for myself, so uh, have a good one.